Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we bring you the very first look at the new tier 5 Italian destroyer, the Leon. So, with that being said, let's look at our commander. First of all, I don't know what Wargaming has against the Italians, but for God's sakes, man, they don't give you anything. They don't get they didn't want to give us the rolling smoke screen. They don't want to give us the SAP. They don't want to give us commanders for the the ships. Like there is no dedicated destroyer commander. It's like, okay, well, just use the the regular commander and hope for the best. So that's what we're doing here. Uh just as a heads up. They didn't give us the uh dispersion build commander for a uh, battleship either. So like they literally just they they have a vendetta against the Italians. I'm I'm convinced of it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But somebody over there does not like the Italians. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, we are using Inigo Campioni. We are running the Charles Madden and Vincent Mordor, or M Mordoff, sorry, as our commander inspiration. Wait, Spartan, you're running a destroyer without all of the destroyer detectability perks? What is this? Trust me, you need it on this thing. So we're using Vincent Mordoff for his ability to decrease the reload time of the guns. We are also using Charles Madden for his ability to reduce the reload of the guns. So we're trying to get as much reload out of these guns as possible. Well, with that being said, we are using Contact as Imminent, Look at Me Now, Back in Stock, and Reaching Out XXL. Now you could go with the Traverse Speed here, but I don't think you really need it. So. Uh, the Traverse isn't that bad on these. The only reason I'm using Charles Madden is for that buff to the reload speed. Uh, and that's why we're using uh, Mordoff as well. But uh, yeah, there is no dedicated destroyer commander, so good luck. So anyway, the upgrades, we're using Aiming System Mod 1. And we are using Steering Gears Mod 2. Alright. And with that... We are running the uh, Community Contributor Flag, the permanent camo that comes with the ship, and we are running the Epic Battle Booster. So I'll take the booster off so that you guys can see the current stats of the ship without the booster running. Uh, survivability, 13,700 hit points. Artillery, you have eight 120 millimeter guns that are fantastic. They reach out to 10.7 kilometers without the booster. They get to 11 kilometers with the booster. The reload time is 8.8 .8 seconds with this build, and 180 degree turn time 17.2. Not the fastest turning turrets, but not bad. HE shell damage is 1700 with a 6% chance to set fire, but it feels a lot lower than that. Uh, it doesn't set a lot of fires, this ship, but it hits like a Mack truck for a destroyer. And the AP shell, 2100 maximum damage, not bad. Uh, torpedoes, you get four. 533 millimeter uh, torpedoes and dual launchers. You get a uh, 45.1 second reload time, which is fantastic, but that goes back to the fact that it's a dual launcher. So keep that in mind. They have a pretty good surface detection of one kilometers on the torps, so very nice. And the torpedo range is 11 kilometers. However, they're really, really slow, which is why we took some extra torpedo speed to get it up to 55 knots. Uh, AA defense, this ship has no AA. Just just assume it has nothing. Because you're not shooting down anything with this thing. I don't think. But uh, you'll see what I mean in a moment. Maneuverability, 34 knots, so slow for a destroyer. Turning circle, 620 meters. Doesn't sound great, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, rudder shift time, just 2.7 seconds with this build. It is very, very agile. And it comes in handy when you're being harassed by a carrier. Foreshadowing? maybe concealment is 5.8 with our build which is not good but it was like 6.3 so getting it down to 5.8 i'll take it uh detectability by air is 3.3 that comes in handy and then the guaranteed uh, is always two with a 2.3 kilometer smoke firing penalty fire the armor you don't really have armor because you're a uh you're a destroyer 16 millimeters pretty much everywhere and then of course the center of the ship you have a quite large uh, vital area to get those maximum a or maximum he shell damage hits so keep that in mind uh yeah overview rapid reload torpedoes reload more quickly than average we already talked about that she's stealthy with good torpedo concealment 
gives enemies time to react to it or gives enemies less time to react to incoming threats yeah if only they weren't 50 knot torpedoes <laughs> sluggish shot difficult to aim at long distances but the trajectory allows for effective fire from cover uh this i don't really find that difficult but then again i'm used to playing a lot of uh, american light cruisers and stuff so i'm used to aiming a little differently i guess but uh, Leon, a very large destroyer in comparison with her contemporaries, officially classified as a light scout for a long time. One of the ship's features was eight main battery guns placed in four twin mounts. She entered service in 1924. There were three of them in the series. I think there were four planned and only three of them built. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at this ship. It's, it's it's an old destroyer man it's not a good looking ship but it's not horrendous i don't hate it it doesn't one notable thing is unlike every other italian ship that we've seen this one does not have the candy striping on the on the top of the ship so uh interesting to say the least so with that being said let's get to the gameplay Alrighty, so we're gonna be on north and we're in the leone and it's a domination and there's an aircraft carrier. Who could have thunk it? But uh, yeah, we're going to go push into Charlie and try to help out the team in every way we can. Now, this ship in particular, I think, uh, is not a bad ship. Much like my thought on the Roma. Okay? I don't hate the Roma. I hate the fact that they forced me to play it a certain way. And it is the exact same issue that I have with this particular ship. They don't give you a dedicated destroyer commander. Maybe it'll be coming in the near future, in which case, Wargaming, why would you release a destroyer without a dedicated commander? Like, that's just dumb. Let's be real. Uh, but, you know, all of the griping aside, I honestly like the ship. The guns are fantastic. You can actually, with, with a full concealment build, get your concealment down to 5.3, which is better than most people's concealment, so you, you've got a pretty good chance there. And this thing against other destroyers is pretty nasty. Uh, and it's very good at dodging torpedoes, as we're going to showcase in this one as well. Uh, this, this match is going to showcase all of the, the high points, I think, about the ship, uh, as well as, you know, one of the low points. And the biggest low point is, A, its torpedoes are slow as crap, and B, it's slow. It, it is just slow. It's like running around in an Akazuki. It's just not very quick, and that hurts you in a lot of situations, uh, one of which I will be showcasing in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, uh, we're initially kind of being a little bit uh, timid to get into the cap. We know that they have a destroyer. He likely spawned over here, so we're kind of keeping an eye out, trying to see if we can find him. Now, they've already got the enemy carrier spotted. Uh, which is going to play into... Oh, hello, Fabuki. How are you doing? All right, so uh, we have a cruiser going right at an enemy Fabuki, so that's going to end badly for the Fabuki because they are very close to one another. And uh, Fabuki is getting ripped apart as he should. Now, I was contemplating firing here, and then I realized he's smoking up. He's going to turn in. I'm going to go ahead and drop my torps and fill this little channel just in case. But it doesn't matter because he ends up taking torps from our Konigsberg, which is hilarious. But, uh, yeah, we're going to... Now that we have no destroyer threat to worry about, it's kind of open season for me, which is perfect because I don't have great concealment, but even a terrible concealment destroyer has better concealment than everything else in the game currently, since the destroyer that was against us is gone. So uh, yeah, we are going to have a fun little time. Now, I saw the, the, crew, uh, the carrier get spotted out there, and I'm like, hmm, what are the odds that this carrier is not paying attention? Maybe I can sneak up on him. Now, I really, really wanted to go to the right and go in front of this island that's up here because I figured the carrier would try to run towards the rest of his team, right? Makes sense. When somebody's trying to disengage, they're getting away from the threat and towards help from their team. So I wanted to go in front of this, but I can't. I'm not allowed because there is an enemy New Mexico, and he is kind of interrupting my plan. So I have no choice. Now, we're watching the Omaha. We can't really do anything with the Omaha. And uh, nice work. so we're just waiting for our opportunity. Obviously, New Mexico finally fires his guns, and we are right on the border of being able to shoot at him with our torps. Uh, remember, 11-kilometer torpedoes. You can get that out to 11.6 with a uh, torp build, I believe. So keep that in mind. Uh, but 
he starts speeding up and that's going to allow us to get some potential torps into him here uh, so we're just going to go ahead and launch our torps give us a little bit of a gap and now we have the carrier spotted now this is the part where things get fun because i mean he's a broadside carrier it, i'm in a good gunboat destroyer this should be no brainer now i didn't want to get out ahead of him right around this mountain which i wish i had uh, this this enemy New Mexico is sailing away. I should have turned in and just ran parallel to him, but I was afraid that the New Mexico would be able to help shoot me. And I wanted to avoid that as long as possible till I was able to see what this thing was capable of. And we get four citadels right there for almost 10 grand. So this is just showcasing just how nasty this armor piercing can be if you get a chance to use it. Another 7,600 with three citadels. Uh, and then you see the maneuverability of the ship. No trouble whatsoever of dodging those incoming torpedoes dropped from a plane. Obviously, those are really slow torpedoes, so there's that. But uh, you can see as we're getting shot, those ones weren't particularly good. I think he's starting to finally realize that uh, he needs to start moving. But we are getting citadels, and this is one where we weren't paying attention and we took two torpedoes. And that's huge, because that's going to hurt us uh, later in this now, we're also going behind him, and that's opening up the angle, and you can see we're starting to ricochet all of our a AP off of him. And he's outside of our torp range as well, so we're not able to actually get any torps on him. And this is the problem with having really fast carriers, is that not only do they have great concealment, but they're fast. Now, I had to give up my pursuit because of those torpedoes, uh, whether that was his intention or whether he was just trying to torp me, and that was what ended up happening no one will know but we end up sitting in our smoke here for a moment that allows him to disengage and then i'm going to make the wrong play here and actually keep trying to chase him now at this point there's no hope that i'm going to catch up to him remember i'm slow as crap at max i'm going to be catching him at like one knot maybe two knots so the closing speed is not good now we do get him spotted temporarily he's at eight and a half kilometers so this guy is not running a concealment build on his ranger uh, which is good for me, but at the same time we get a fire here And I, I I keep trying to get that fire because if I can get another fire on him That's gonna burn him for quite a while and hopefully finish him off But you can see we're shattering all of our HE onto the deck of the the aircraft carrier not preferable We don't have a shot with AP on him unfortunately So at this point we're just trying to do something to get this man off the board and once again, he drops torps, we're going away. His his torps are as slow as mine, so we don't have to really worry about it. Uh, and we managed to avoid those nice and easily. Uh, just gotta keep your head on a swivel as a destroyer, man. It's just no, no joke whatsoever when it comes to uh, carriers versus destroyers. It's, it's disgustingly one-sided. Uh, unless you can catch them off guard and maybe torp them early, or if you're a uh, gunboat that's quick, you can actually close in and get close enough to citadel them to death very quickly. Uh, but here, once again, we're going to be uh, slowing down, trying to get between the gap. Thank God. And yep, we managed to squeeze in once again. Just keeping the head on the swivel. But uh, he manages to disappear. He finally breaks contact with us once again, forcing us to slow down. And now, at this point, I need to try to uh, disengage. Uh, but I'm not disengaging right away and that's gonna cost me some more hit points. We got 4,000 hit points left because we took those two torpedoes. Which is not what you would call preferable. But, again, this guy's coming in. He doesn't actually have a spotted yet, so he's trying to get his torpedoes to be as accurate as possible. I mean, he wants a narrow spread so that he can at least give, me, give a shot at hitting me. And we just turn in immediately as he drops them, and we avoid them completely. There's nothing he can do there. Uh, the fact that this guy just keeps launching torps at me is actually a good thing for my team. It allows my team some reprieve from being attacked by the carrier. And that allows them to do the other thing. Uh, this battleship that's behind me is actually trying to... Oh, God, are we going to be able to squeeze? Come on! No! Couldn't quite turn in this time, unfortunately. Uh, that was a much tighter spread. It was really difficult, but we managed to get one torp and not the other, so we survived for now. And so now we need to just try to disengage. At this point, I give up completely on trying to chase down the uh, carrier. He drops these one much closer, but again, not really that difficult. We're, we've got all of our horizontal speed, you know, as a compared to uh, those torpedoes, so we're able to outrun them. 
And uh, yeah, now we're just like, okay, I need to disengage from these freaking points because our team is actually losing this match. We're losing on points. Uh, the enemy has sunk three of our cruisers and we have only sunk two ships. Um, so despite my efforts so far in this match, uh, we have not been able to do much other than take uh, potential damage from the rest of the team while this carrier tries to kill us. So that's good. Uh, at least there, he's trying to kill me, and I'm more than adequate at dodging most of his torpedoes. I have taken a couple. Now here, I'm just trying to fake him out. I don't want him to know exactly which direction I'm going. And then I, I stay straight here. I figure he's going to be launching up the rear. It's hard for me to see the torps, so I'm thinking about turning. And as soon as I start turning, the torps get detected, and we're able to dodge these pretty easily. Once again, just grabbing a few more bites out of that uh, turning. The, the, the agility of this thing is pretty good. I do like the agility, uh, much like my American destroyers. The, these things do get through the water pretty easily when you need them to. Uh, it's just not, it's not fast, it's slow. Uh, he comes for another drop at my, my backside, unfortunately for him. Not a whole lot he could do about it. I'm going to be dodging those all day and twice on Sunday. Uh, but we're closing in on getting towards B, uh, which means we're going to start affecting that. We are also going to be closing in on A, because if I look at where the enemy is currently, they have two cruisers at B with a battleship. And they have three battleships over at A. I like my odds versus battleships more than cruisers, for obvious reasons. So I'm going to be making my way over towards A. Uh, I've disengaged from the carrier. He is going to find it hard to find me now. Um, and he is going to be instead going after our battleship for the rest of this match. And so that's going to allow me to scoot around and do what I need to do. So I get a lot closer than these guys are aware, and I start dropping torps into the Bravo cap. It's a target-rich environment. Even if I don't manage to hit, you know, the torps, like, I'm likely to hit something, you know, if even if it's not the guy that I'm looking at. Uh, but uh, they managed to capture Alpha, which is not good. That gives them a 2-1 to one advantage. They've already got the points lead. We've lost another cruiser, or no, we lost a battleship, so we're down three, three cruisers and a battleship at this point. The team is losing pretty heavily but the game's not over guys you always got to keep fighting you always got to know what you're trying to do to win the match we've got torps on the way we're about to get some more torps out uh the new mexico is reversing so we're going to go ahead and uh, it looks like he's slowing down so potentially not going to be reversing um, and you can see i launch one at the omaha's like heading and then i decide okay well i think maybe the omaha is coming back this direction so we'll launch the torps along this island, maybe catch him coming, you know, a little closer to the island. And then we're still heading towards our goal, which is to Alpha. We want to get to Alpha as quickly as possible so that we could potentially capture that base because these guys are heading away from it. And if they're heading away from it, even though there is an Iron Duke directly ahead of me, um, by the time I get there, there's a good chance that I can at least contest the base, if not outright cap it. And uh, we missed the first set of torps on the New Mexico, unfortunately. But uh, we are still heading in the direction of the Iron Duke. And, lo and behold, our torpedoes managed to find the Omaha. Of all the things to catch with torpedoes that go slow as crap, we catch the Omaha of all things. And so uh, we managed to bring the game a little bit closer. Remember, we're down by quite a bit, but that kill right there brings it up to just a, a seven-point game. So huge, absolutely huge. And then my team on top of that is going to end up killing one of their battleships very, very soon. And that is going to be the, um, the beginning of the end of this team. Now we see the Iron Duke out here. We just got in range. We launch our torpedoes. And again, these torps take 10 minutes to get to the target. But Aoba manages to take out the Peter Veliki, which is huge. And that gives us the lead. Uh, for the first time in a very long time, we have the lead. Uh, we have one cap, and I'm about to get into a second cap, and the Iron Duke has just sailed out of the cap, which means now I'm going to be able to capture this base. And on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and drop my, my remaining smokescreen, anticipating a potential uh, attack from the carrier, and also allowing me to just sit here and shoot the Iron Duke while he's being uh, spotted by the Aoba out there. So, good job by the AO, but to stay in the fight. 
keeping himself relevant, helping the team pull this out at the end. And uh, these torpedoes may be slow, but if you make absolutely zero adjustments to your course, and I get within 11 kilometers, you're going to get hit. They, they can be as slow as you want, but if you're just going to sail in a straight line and not make any adjustments to your course, you're going to be eating torps regardless. And uh, that's what this man's about to take. He's about to take one and two up the prop shaft, and down he goes. And that takes our total up to 67,000 damage. We've got 10 citadels, five torpids, two kills. We've got another solo cap, so we've got two solo caps in this one. We've done everything we can to help our team win. Even in a ship that is, in my opinion, the, the ship itself, I don't mind. It's the fact that we don't get a commander that, that can take advantage of what this ship can do uh, that really hurts me. But uh, Dallas out here versus a battleship. Battleship should have no trouble taking that Dallas out. So we're going to try to intercept this carrier. Hoping to intercept the carrier. But, of course, it's a carrier. He's already made up his mind. He's probably all the way back in the corner by now, or at least doing the T-Bowl shuffle over there on the sideline. And... Uh, we're not going to be able to catch him in time. We do see his AA going off, so we know where he's at. But unfortunately, it's just not a whole lot I can do. And because our carrier is so far away from the fight, and if, if you're in a carrier, don't be these two guys. The one guy, he didn't have a choice. He was running away from me. But the other guy on our team, like, don't be that guy. There's nothing around him. And it makes his, his flight time so much longer that it, it just makes him useless, essentially. So don't do that in a carrier. Try to follow your team around the map, keeping yourself safe, obviously, but follow your team around the map. That way you're always in, in uh, close proximity and ability to actually affect the, uh, the game for the entire match. But uh, we managed to finish the game. Uh, you know we're going to be up there uh, right around top of the leaderboard, if not the top on the leaderboard. I can't remember which, but uh, getting some of that steel. 67,000 damage, second on the leaderboard. Aoba rightfully taking the tops with 2,200 base with two kills huge kills at the end of the game so if you like what i'm doing punch the like button leave a comment below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always i will see you in the next video